winter in the UAE and with daytime temperatures sitting comfortably in the high 20s, conditions are perfect for the event which will bring to a close the 2014 UIM Skydive Dubai XCAT World Series. Welcome to Dubai and the Emirates Airline XCAT Grand Prix. All eyes this weekend focusing on the big battle for second place overall. We sent Mark Werrell down to the dry pits to talk to the hopefuls. It really has been a good season. Uh, you know, we've made a couple of podiums and we're still in that fight for the second position. Several other boats can come up and take it away from us. So we're going to fight really hard this weekend, at least for a podium. I think that's what top six is in, in every race so far. Back with Salam Aladidi this weekend. Yes, uh, really happy to be back with him and uh, this is a really a challenging course, so it's going to be a challenging weekend. Luca, back to Dubai for the final race of the year and you're hoping to try and finish certainly in the top three in the championship. Yeah, that's our goal and we're close to the second position. There's not that many points between yourselves and the number seven boat though, four second. No, it's about uh, 100 points. It's a very good team, very good boat. At least now we have something to to challenge and I like to challenge. So a big battle on the cards but of equal interest to completely new boats, both carrying the distinctive Abu Dhabi livery. But as the team manager explained to Mark, there's no shortage of experience in the cockpits. Uh, we have an experienced drivers uh, in both boats, uh, number four and number five. The number four boat uh, racing uh, with Ahmed Al Hamli and uh, Scott Gilman. Boat number five racing with uh, Rashid Atayr and Faleh Al Mansouri, which uh, they were racing in class one uh, this season. So we have a couple of uh, experienced drivers and uh, inshallah we will get a good position uh, this weekend. Also hoping for a good end to what's been an eventful season, the Moad pairing of Wacking Cumlin and Gary Ballou. Yeah, we started off uh, over in Fujero. We got taken out on the first lap, and uh, to get those points back, you know, in the next just you know a couple races is almost impossible. So, you know, we've had to uh, spin our focus to just you know going race to race and uh, doing the best we can to try to get the Moad boat back out front. And that's very much the position occupied by this boat, Fazza. Four consecutive wins, but not qualifying for points this weekend, which is being seen very much as a test session. And for you, this weekend is doing a bit more homework as well, because you're running the new engines that we're going to be seeing on all of the boats in 2015. Uh, yes, uh, we're doing a lot of R&D with Mercury. Uh, there's a lot of glitches in the engine, and uh, we're trying to solve those issues. You have to strengthen the back of the transom of the boat. Uh, there's a lot of work into it. It's not just put the engines and go and race. Uh, today is going to be a real test to see how the engines are going to perform, how they're going to uh, react, especially when it's a bit uh, rough condition. So we'll see how it goes. Well, the weekend's action kicking off with Imar pole position effectively at the qualifying runs, through which Fazer appeared to be somewhat off the pace with the new engine's only seventh fastest. Our man in the pits, Mark Warrell, runs us through the six fastest boats. Alessandro, sixth quickest in qualifying, a session where you got quicker and quicker. We had the problem at the beginning for set up the the boat, but the last lap uh, we tried to, to push and, uh, of course, we we did the, la, the, best, the best time. Joachim, you were fifth fastest in qualifying, but only did one lap. Yeah, we only did one lap. We was really happy about the lap. We was first and second for a while. Then uh, we looked at the boat and the balance in the boat. We couldn't do nothing about it, so uh, we was happy with that lap that we had. Matteo, fourth in the championship coming into this weekend, and you've qualified fourth for the race. Yeah, it was a very tough qualification, it was uh, quite rough outside. Uh, we are like four boats in a few tenths of second. it's unbelievable. Uh, me, I'm out of the podium for I think one tenth or something like that. Giovanni, third fastest in qualifying, but you were on pole position for a while. Yeah, we have, uh, we have do one lap uh, f fast uh, with a couple of risks, not a lot. And then uh, we try again, but uh, the, the, the waves change in the end and uh, we don't want to take any risk because uh, the race is tomorrow. Important is uh, we are in the first gate 
and uh, boat number seven is in the second gate, so this is our target. In places, Francois, it looks as though the water is, is quite rough. Yes, today is rough. I think uh, at the last bore there is uh, four, five feet uh, haft, but uh, uh, I like the raft. Alfredo, your boat was fastest in practice and took pole position today. Yes, yes. Also today we conquisted the fifth uh, time in pole position. For pole position this year for, uh, for us is uh, very, very, very good. So, Videx top of the qualifiers, front of the pack for the start of the Emirates Grand Prix. No sign of either Fazer testing those new four-stroke engines or indeed the challengers Dubai, who will be bitterly disappointed with today's performance. But there's still one more chance to get things right with the speed cap run. Jack Nichols talks us through the closing stages. The Dubai skyline is looking superb as we get ready for the first semi-final. It'll be those guys, the T-Bone Station pairing in boat number 10 of Luca Fendi and Giovanni Carpatella up against Moad, boat number 50, Joachim Kumlin and Gary Ballou as we get ready for the green flags be raised. There we go, Pasquale Susana sets them off on their way. That's T-Bone Station on the right-hand side, nearest to the shore in the number 10 boat. And they've got a reasonably good start, but Moad, who are closest to us, look like potentially they are just about in front. We go on board with the 10 boat. Coming up towards the finish line already, Moad still just about have the edge at the helicopter shot. They go past the yellow boy first. It's going to be very close as they come towards the line, though. Who's going to be making it through to the final? The finish line is coming up, and goodness me, that's close. That is too close to call from uh, an initial shot. Let's have a look at the virtual line. You can see that T-Bone Station had the lead, but Moad closed in. But it was T-Bone Station who just about get to the line first, is it? Yes, looks that way, and it'll be T-Bone Station that progressed to the final, but what an incredibly close finish that is. Second semi-final getting underway in just a few moments' time. Who will be meeting T-Bone Station in the final? There's Matteo Nicolini, looking happy with life, as well he might be. There's the Qatar team. They are one of the pairing in this second semi-final. The other is the number seven Dubai boat on the left-hand side. There's the green flag, and the race is underway. The number 94... Qatar team boat is closest to the shore. Mohammed Al Nasser and Abdulrahim Al Nasser. Whereas there is Salim Ali Al Adidi at the wheel of the Dubai boat with Jay Price on the throttle. They're on the left hand side in the white and blue machine, and it looks as though the Dubai boat has got the advantage. Qatar team struggling to stay with the Dubai team, and it's going to be a comfortable victory for Dubai as they go through to the final of the Speedcat run. There's a look at the replay, and they had a good five boat lengths or so as they came across the line. A comfortable victory then for Jay Price and Salim al -Adidi. 32 metres the winning margin. We get ready now for the third place race, which will be the two losers from the semi-finals going head to head. And there you can see closest to the shore, it's Moad furthest away from the shore. It is the Qatar team as the green flag is raised and the race is underway. There you can see Moad have got a little bit of an advantage now, growing up to 10 metres or so. Looks as though Joachim Kumlin and Gary Ballou got a pretty good start, but Qatar team are right in there as well. This is going to be a close one as they come towards the line. Perhaps Moad still just about having the advantage. Here they come towards the finish line now, and Moad are starting to pull clear, moving over and taking third position. They might have gone through the wrong gate there at the end. I think usually they have to go either side of that white boy. But it's Moad who come across the line first to take third position away from Qatar team. But now it's all down to the final, which will be the number seven boat of Dubai, Salim al Adidi and Jay Price. And they are up against their rivals, T-Bone Station, Luca Fendi and Giovanni Carpitella. There's the green flag. Skydive of Dubai on the right-hand side. Over on the left-hand side there is T-Bone Station as we get going in the final of the Dubai Duty Free Speed Cat Run. Who's got a good getaway here? There's Salim al -Adidi at the wheel of the Dubai boat and it looks as though they have got the advantage over T-Bone Station at the moment. They're coming towards the line now and it's victory for Dubai in the Dubai Duty Free Speed Cat Run.
And a wave to the crowd for Salam Aladidi. Delighted with that victory. Time now for the podium presentations then. And on the third step of the podium, we've got uh, Gary Ballou and Joachim Kumlin. There is Giovanni Carpatella onto the second step with the Italian flag. But there's Salim Aladidi, and he is over the moon with his victory in the Dubai Duty Free Speed Cat Run. Uh, joined on the top step by Jay Price as the trophies are awarded. And Salim Aladidi on the top step for Dubai. Oh, I feel great about it. It's my birthday. It's finally a birthday present for me today. Uh, it started off rough to, this morning and yesterday. It looks like the mechanics have found the problem and it's really working. Coming up, the main event as we go racing for the final time this season with the Emirates Airline XCAT Grand Prix. Welcome back to the final round of the UIM Skydive Dubai XCAT World Series, the 2014 Emirates Airline Grand Prix, where once again it's a truly carnival atmosphere. The crowd's enjoying the sunshine and of course the racing as the series makes a welcome return to its home in the United Arab Emirates. While the international races uh, have been wonderfully successful, it's always good to be back in Dubai. It is once again been a very successful season for XCAT racing. We have again uh, witnessed the incredible growth uh, and interest in the series. A sign of this uh, is the numerous new teams we have welcomed to the series this year. We have a number of new exciting venues uh, lined up for this 2015 series. One uh, that we have already looked for August 2015 is the Gold Coast in Australia, which is very exciting for us as we venture onto another uh, continent. We have been working with Mercury to develop and test uh, the new four-stroke engines. The much more reliable, environmentally friendly engine will be introduced for the 2015 uh, season. So we're almost set for the Emirates Airline XCAT Grand Prix. But first, here's a quick reminder of the current standings. With four wins out of four so far, Faza can't be beaten to the overall title. But the runner-up spot is still up for grabs. Back to Jack Nichols for race highlights. There are our pole sitters, Alfredo Amato and Marco Panessi, getting ready for the race to start. There's the green flag on the left-hand side. And Videx on pole position on the number 22 boat. Get this race underway. It's not a great start for the Nicolini boat that we're on board with here. The uh, sixth boat dropping back just a little bit. You can see them on the left-hand side there. The uh, horns boost of Matteo Nicolini and Tommaso Poli. But look at that start in the middle of the pack. Fazza, that is in the number three boat right out there in the lead of the race by the looks of things when they get to the first corner. This is looking back from Marine Investimenti Sud of Serafino Balesi and Alessandro Baroni. As we go on board now with Faza, Arafal Zafin and Nadir Binhendi look like they have powered their way into the lead of the race. This is on board with the pole position boat, Alfredo Amato and Marco Panessi in the Videx machine, but they are now in second place. Here's a look from Spirit of Dubai, number 11, trying to get up the inside as they come into the first corner, the right-hander. We're on board now with the sixth boat of Horse and Boost, and they're getting quite a good getaway as well. But Fazza are in the lead. There you can see them ahead of Videx. Moad are up into third place then. They started fifth uh, in the pole position order. So that's a good start from Moad as well. On board we go with Videx in second place. Going wider into that turn to try and avoid the spray that's being kicked up from the lead boat of Fazza. On board we go with Moad. Right up behind Marine Investimenti Sud, who are on board with here and they spin. Big moment for Marine Investimenti Sud. And that is going to knock them well back down the order. That'll be another place gained for the number six boat of Horse and Boost. And there's T-Bone Station getting involved in there as well. It's very busy in the middle of the pack. There you can see, uh, I think that was Moad going very wide to try and avoid the wake. Yes, it is. And then it's Dubai behind them. So we go on board with Moad, currently in third place. Joachim Kumlin and Gary Ballou. But there, across the line, is Fazza. A reminder that they're trialing new engines in this race, so they're not eligible for championship points. They're more than eligible for victory. There's the seven boat of Salam Aladidi and Jay Price. Already victors in the Dubai Duty Free Speed Cat Run. Can they win here as well 
in the Emirates Airlines XCAT Grand Prix of Dubai, the final round of the season. There you can see via virtual eye our top three, Faza, Videx, and then Moad in third position. Faza have quite a big advantage. Moad are looking up the inside of the Videx boat, number 22, as they come out to the furthest point away on the shore. And look at that, very, very close as Moad tried to get past. And as a result, they're bulked into the wake of the Videx boat, and that'll knock them back a little bit. That could allow Dubai the opportunity to get past. And there you can see some of the boats on the right-hand side. They're starting to take their long lap. They have to do two long laps around this circuit. But here's the battle for the lead of the race, and Videx are about to move in front of Fazza, are they? The 22 boat that we're on board with are getting alongside the race leaders, Fazza. And look at that. Out of the water completely there for Videx. Fazza still just about maintaining that straight line speed advantage. There's a look back to Spirit of Dubai on the left-hand side. They're being closely followed by the number four boat of Abu Dhabi Team 4. Ahmed Al Hamli and Scott Gilman piloting that machine. And there's Rahib. Abdul Latif Al Omani and Yasim M. Saad, always racing in the XCAT World Series and great to have them here again. There's Marina Vestimenti Sud, they're trying to recover after that spin on the very first lap. But they've got a lot of work to do, but not as much work as the 96 boat, unfortunately. Francois Pinelli and Sal Bubasho retiring, they qualified second, but it looks as though their race is over. The battle for the lead is still going on. Videx still trying to get past Fazza into the long right-hander that brings them out onto the start, finish straight once again. And there they come. Fazza still just about with the advantage. They take a wider line into that final corner. There's Moad, they're still in the hunt as well. This is a brilliant XCAT race. On board we go, that's Joachim Kumlin on the left with the wheel in his hands. Gary Ballou on the right, operating the throttle. But here now is the battle for the lead continuing and they're still side by side. Unbelievable action in the Emirates Airlines XCAT Grand Prix of Dubai. And have Videx now finally managed to wrestle the lead away? Nadir Bin Hendi's looking out of his window to see where they are. Meanwhile, third place has changed. That's the Dubai boat on the right-hand side. They are past Moad. So Dubai, Salim al -Adidi and Jay Price are in third position now, but they're still going side by side with Moad, who we're on board with. Then we've got Spirit of Dubai behind. Rashid al Mari and Salim Padil al Hamli. And then look at this, Marine Investimenti Sud going side by side with Qatar team. Mohamed al Nasser and Abdulram al Nasser losing out there to Serafino Balesi and Alessandro Baroni. We go on board with Marine Investimenti Sud. There they go, past the Qatar team and past the Dubai skyline. But here now is the Videx boat. Alfredo Amato and Marco Panessi are now in the lead of this race. Or are they? <laughs> Faza, just as we say that, managed to come back through. Heated discussion you can see there in the Videx cockpit. There's Dubai boat running in third place. Salim al at the wheel. And there is Horson Boos of Matteo Nicolini and Tommaso Poli. It's Tommaso Poli at the wheel, Matteo Nicolini operating the throttle. And there's this battle with Qatar team that we were seeing earlier on. doing a good job just in front of T-Bone Station. Luca Fendi and Giovanni Carpatella not quite having the race pace to match the speed they showed in the Emar pole position session. And as a result, that third place that they started is not looking like where they may finish. There's Dubai again then. Salim al and Jay Price keeping to the inside line. And look at that, they've really brought themselves into the battle for the lead. Fazrid is in the lead, Videx in second place, but Dubai have really started to put the pressure on. And they are coming in to join the party and try and battle over the lead of the race. Salim al looking out the window to try and see where his rivals are. The answer are, is that they are all right together. Fazza, less than half a boat length in front of Videx. We're on board with Videx now. Alfredo Amato and Marco Panessi challenging for the lead of the race, but here come Dubai on the outside line. Salim al and Jay Price trying to fight for the lead. And they've got up into second place then. So Videx losing out on that second position for the time being, and they're going to be all cut up in the wake. Look at the visibility as soon as you get behind a boat in front. And that is really going to knock the 22 boat potentially out of contention for the lead of the race. 
down to third place. There's Tommaso Polly and Matteo Nicolini once again. They've just completed one of their long laps by the looks of things. And are now out with the Qatar team, I think that is. There is the sixth boat on the right-hand side, Spirit of Dubai flashing past. Rashid Al Mari and Salim Fadel Al Hamli. But there are Moad still pounding round. But Faza and Dubai are now going side by side for the lead. We've seen so many battles between these two boats over the last couple of years. Some incredible Imar pole position sessions and now some incredible racing as Dubai take the lead. They're in front of Faza. Jay Price and Salim Al Adidi take the lead of the Emirates Airlines XCAT Grand Prix here in Dubai. What a stunning race this is turning into. Oh, but it's not stunning for Serafino Balesi and Alessandro Baroni. A spin on the first lap, and it looks as though their race may be over. There's Lady Spain. Palvedic Nilsson is the man on the throttle. And Pierre Simone Volpe is the man at the wheel. There's boat number five, the second Abu Dhabi team boat. Rashid Al Tire and Fale Al Mansouri. And there is the 17 boat of Rahib, Abdulati Falomani and Yasim Hamsad. But here are our race leaders then, and Fazza have done one long lap, Moad have done two long laps on lap five and six. Dubai out in the lead of this race, but yet to do either of their long laps so far. But what an entertaining race this is turning into for the big crowd that has turned up here in Minas Siahi. Awesome bus still working hard out there, as are the Abu Dhabi boats that are newcomers to the XCAT World Series this weekend. 94 is Qatar team. Mohamed Al Nasser and Abdulrahman Al Nasser. We go on board, though, with the number three boat of Faza. Already the championship victors. But now they're battling for the race lead still with the seven boat of Dubai. Into the first corner they come once again. And Faza looking to the outside of the Dubai boat. Look how concerned Salim Al Adidi is there. There's the third place boat. Videx, Alfredo Amato and Marco Panessi, the boat that started on pole position. And then it's Moad behind them in fourth position. Joachim Kumlin and Gary Ballou. Started fifth, running fourth. Not a bad performance so far for Moad at all. But there is the Dubai boat now. They have completed their second long lap. And whoa, look at the nose of that boat getting up in the air. A retirement by the looks of things for Ahmed Al Hamli and Scott Gilman in the Abu Dhabi boat. But now Faza have edged into the lead. Now that Dubai have completed both of their long laps. This is T-Bone Station we're on board with. Luca Fendi and Giovanni Carvitella. Great to have them in the championship. They're having a strong run here this afternoon in Dubai. Oh, but not such a strong run, unfortunately, for Lady Spain. Palverick Nilsson and Pierre Simone Volpe look to be out of the race. But the fans are waiting expectantly because there's not long left to go in this Emirates Airlines XCAT Grand Prix. There's the chequered flag. It's waiting because this boat is coming. Faza, the champions already of the season, are about to take another final victory in the final round of the Skydive Dubai XCAT World Series. Second place surely is going to be Dubai. Yes, it is. They have managed to hold off the challenge of Videx. So it's second place across the line for Dubai. Third for Videx. And here's confirmation of those final results. Faza winning the closest race of the season by 11 seconds in the end, with Videx, Muad, Spirit of Dubai and T-Bone Station completing the top six. As for the final standings, another championship title for Faza, with Dubai ending their campaign as runners-up. T-Bone Station take third place in the standings ahead of Videx, who move up to fourth. Let's hear now from our race winners. I make a uh, decision with my friend today to use uh, good setup for the start because I'm start uh, seven position and our plan to have great start and uh, I think we'll do it the start to reach the first boy and then we'll continue to to stay in our position. So a thrilling way to round out another hugely successful season for the Skydive Dubai XCAT World Series. Congratulations to Faza champions once again.